It started out like a totally normal good day. now? Objection deadline to the third line after survey. Oh, honey. I always use the breakfast What are you doing down there? Did you finish your breakfast? Ow. Don't hit your brother. I mean, you have to eat something. Here. Okay, five minutes to carpool. Where's my coffee? You okay, Mom? Oh, I'm fine. Sandwich orders. What do you want? Almond butter and jelly. Daddy. Oh, you sure you're okay? I'm fine, sweetie. I am so late. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Uh, hey, honey. Ooh. You okay? Uh, yeah, I'm fine. You sure? Oh, yeah. Here. Acai, my favorite. Yeah. See you guys later. Where are your shoes? Put your shoes back on, please. You know, go help your sister. We're going in three minutes. Oh my God, what am I doing? I forgot to cut off the crust. Voila, shoes on, potty if you need it. Honey, get your sister. Okay, here. Shoes. Nobody move. I'm getting a dustpan. Oh. Mom, mm. I think you're having a heart attack. Honey, do I look like the type of person who has a heart attack? I'm totally fine. Don't forget to wear the high socks with the shin guards. Forget about the shin guards, Mom. <gasps> Come on, Mrs. Underdog is not going to wait. <sighs> oh. Sorry to bother you. <laughs> I think I might be having a little heart attack. <laughs> Nothing really, just some nausea, tightening of the jaw, dizziness, shortness of breath, muscle pain, achiness, this terrible pressure in my chest. Oh, really? They can be here in how long? <gasps> Two minutes. Can you make it 10? I thought I had gas. Turns out I was having a heart attack. Heart disease is the number one killer of American women. So now I take care of my heart and I tell the women in my life to do the same. Sounds great, by the way. That's nice, sweetie, but that's not my heart. That is. Make it your mission to save your life and the lives of the women you love. Find out more from the American Heart Association at goredforwomen.org. If anyone can relate to this, I think that a lot of us can. Um, definitely very busy, and it's it's really easy to think about others and you know all the things that we have going on. So that just kind of brings it back home to really you know think about yourself and say you know maybe there's certain things I need to check on. Maybe I need to start eating better or exercising or take my blood pressure. You know what is my blood pressure? Um, so that's just a little bit of what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen for my slides. Give me one second. So let's talk heart health for women. So as a, we just saw, um, our video described some of the symptoms um, and things that might be going on if this happens to you. So did you know, I think everybody knows now, but cardiovascular disease is the number one killer of women causing one in three deaths each year, which is just honestly, it's way too much. And there's a lot that we can do to prevent this from happening. So let's definitely dive into those and kind of talk about what, you know, changes that you're making or things that you're doing to um, keep your heart healthy. So risk factors that can be managed. So you can control or treat these factors with lifestyle changes and your healthcare provider's help. So high blood pressure. So have you taken your blood pressure? Do you know what it is? Are you taking your blood pressure medications? Um, that's you know some of the things that it can be easy to forget um, to take your medication. So kind of setting yourself up for success, um, setting an alarm on your phone, having everything where it needs to be. Um, smoking. So if we are smoking, Stop smoking today. It's not worth the risk. There's many other 
um, diseases and issues that smoking can cause. But if we're talking about heart health, that's definitely something that can be impacted by smoking. High blood cholesterol. So this can be um, dietary related. This can be um, if you have a family history. So there are certain components when it comes to cholesterol that may be um, managed. So really kind of figuring out what your family history is, you know, what your levels are, knowing your numbers is always a good, a good thing. If you're on medication, um, you know, definitely stick to what your doctor is recommending, but getting exercise, eating fiber, um, those are things that can definitely help with blood cholesterol. Um, lack of regular activity, so not exercising, you know, getting in the extra steps where you can, um, really trying to get get moving um, because that will help also with the next one. So obesity or overweight. So really working to try to um, manage and maintain a healthy weight for your body. So um, that's that goes to show with diet and exercise, having that weight that you're trying to achieve um, and just staying active because we can always be sedentary and watch shows, um, play games, you know, but really it's getting outside or, you know, doing something active even with your family at home. Um, diabetes. So diabetes is also a risk factor. Um, so generally with type two diabetes, you know, there's, there's reasons why you're diagnosed with it. So a lot of those risk factors include the ones we just discussed. So if you have diabetes, you know, that's a risk factor in itself but also knowing that the lack of regular activity, obesity, overweight, um, diet, those are all things that contribute to diabetes as well. So risk factors that you can't control. These are gonna be your age, your gender, heredity, so family health history, race, previous stroke or heart attack. So if you have, have had a stroke or a heart attack, um, you know, you're more likely to have another one. Um, so that being a risk factor that you really can't control. So if you have not experienced a stroke or heart attack, let's really think about the risk factors that we can manage and let's work on those so that we can, you know, not get to this point at all. Um, but if you, you know, if you do and everybody's here for you. We are, we have, you have the ultimate support, whether it's your doctor, your dietitian, your pharmacist, um, really work with them to kind of definitely prevent the risk or prevent the risk of the next one. So lifestyle changes that matter. So eating a well-balanced diet, low in sodium. So just really being mindful of how much sodium you're getting, taking a look at the nutrition labels. And also, you know, if your doctor recommends a certain amount of sodium per day for you, then really trying to stick to that. Um, limit alcohol intake, enjoying rec regular exercise, managing stress sounds so much easier said than it is done. So maintaining a healthy weight, quitting smoking, taking medications as prescribed, and working together with your healthcare team. So doctors, dietitians, and pharmacists. So let's talk about some foods that we would like to eat more of. So healthy fats like unsalted nuts, olive oil, flaxseed, avocados. So those are our good heart healthy fats, which promote good cholesterol, promote heart health, um, fruit, vegetables, legumes, like lentils and other beans. So we're talking more about that fiber that we're getting in, which fiber helps with our cholesterol and um, helps keeps, keeps all of our um, arteries from being clogged. So helps with that too. Um, high fiber, low sugar, whole grain cereals, breads, pastas. So high quality proteins such as fish, so skinless poultry and lean meats. So we wanna focus on um, lean meats, of course, even if we're having some beef, if we're having a sirloin um, or something that's on the leaner side, um, but the chicken, fish, we want to strive for fish about two times a week. Um, so like a fatty fish, like salmon, if you like salmon, um, you know, that would be a great option, but there are other fish that are a little more mild that you can get just as much of the benefits. Um, 
dairy products. So kind of just to bring it to an overall um, overview is reducing your stress, exercise regularly, and perfecting your plate. And when I say perfecting your plate, it doesn't mean it has to be perfect. That's definitely not what we're striving for because no one is perfect, but we're striving for, you know, doing better, adding in, you know, that extra um, side of vegetables or not being afraid to try the fish that you think you're going to hate, um, but getting those um, nutrients in that are good for our body and that help to fuel us and sustain us. And so I will, now I'm going to share your slides, Dana. All right, you can go ahead whenever you're ready. Hi guys. So uh, my name is Dana Volpe. I am a pharmacist with Giant. Um, I work out of the Eastern PA um, area and I always love doing these things because I always learn so much from our dietitians and I really enjoy, um, you know, just doing something different than being in the pharmacy. You can click ahead, Crystal. So my slides are going to mirror a lot of what Crystal said, um, but we're going to focus a little bit more on the medical side of things and the, the pharmacy side of things. So like Crystal said, heart disease is the leading cause of death for women in the United States. Um, that's pretty alarming actually. Um, so there's so many things that we can do to prevent it. Um, and like Crystal said, like we have things that we can control and things that we can't control, but these are just some tips for us, for women, but for everyone really to keep your heart healthy. So like Crystal said, we want to start with an um, heart healthy diet um, that's high in fiber, good fats, <clears throat> excuse me, low sugar, and participate in regular physical activities. Um, you want to know what your risk factors are. Crystal went through all of our risk factors. Some are controlled, some are, some are uncontrollable. You want to know your risk factors. Um, and we want to manage our existing health condition. So if we know that we have diabetes, um, we want to take care of that because that's a leading cause of um, heart events. Aspirin is something that is a hot topic a lot of times when we think about heart health. So we'll talk about that for a second and um, knowing the signs of a heart attack and what, you know, what are you supposed to do? You can go ahead. So knowing your risk factors, like, like Crystal said, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, smoking, if you have a family history of heart disease, and obesity. Obesity can lead to high blood pressure. It can lead to high cholesterol and diabetes. So that is um, how it adds to your, your risk of a cardiac event by increasing your risk of having um, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, or diabetes. Yeah. <clears throat> so managing your health conditions, um, the best thing that you can do for yourself is if you know that you're a diabetic, keep tight control of those numbers. If you know that you have high blood pressure, take your medications as they're directed. Um, if you know you have high cholesterol, take your medications as they are directed. Keep your, your appointments with your um, physicians and your medical providers. Um, make sure that you're having regular testing, having your blood pressure screened regularly, having cholesterol numbers checked regularly. Um, and for people who have diabetes, ha keep track of that A1C. That's your best marker of how well you're controlling your, your blood sugar. So a lot of the medications that we think about, um, especially for cholesterol, as a pharmacist, one of the things that I notice is cholesterol medicine in particular we have a really hard time getting people to stay compliant. And what's, what does compliance mean? It means that you're taking your medications exactly as they've been directed by your physician, especially with cholesterol medications. I feel like that's one thing where you can't really tell that they're really making a difference for you, that you don't feel better when you're taking them. Um, yes, your blood work may reflect that they're working, but it's not something day to day that you're like, oh, if I skip this, it doesn't matter. I don't feel any different. Um, and also there can be some side effects with blood, with, um, blood cholesterol medications. So that's one thing, like, I know that it doesn't seem like it does a lot, but it really, really does. So if your, your physician won't prescribe it, if you don't actually really need it and the amount that it can reduce your risk of a cardiac event is so significant, just really think about making sure that you're taking that medicine exactly as directed, um, 
diabetes. If you um, have diabetes, you want to be checking your blood sugar at home. And like I said, you want to keep up with your regular medical appointments and your blood screenings to make sure, <clears throat> excuse me, that your A1C is on track and you're keeping good control of your numbers. You can go to the next slide. So aspirin. Um, aspirin is kind of a hot topic. Um, some, some people think that <clears throat> if they take aspirin, it's kind of a benign medication and it's going to automatically reduce your, your risk of heart events or cardiac events. And that's just not true. Um, aspirin should only be taken if it's been directed by a physician. There have been some studies that show that um, your risk of long-term aspirin um, therapy, the, the risks that come from long-term aspirin therapy may outweigh the benefits of taking that aspirin. So only if your physician has prescribed it for you, do you want to actually take that aspirin? And um, there's different doses out there, like low dose aspirin is 81 milligrams, or sometimes it's called baby aspirin. And it's kind of, um, uh, my, um, trying to figure out the good, the word to use. It's like misleading to think, oh, it's baby aspirin. It's not really that big of a deal, but it can be. So only if your doctor tells you to take it, should you be taking that, that aspirin. Um, it's not right for everybody. And then if you are recommended to take it, make sure you ask your doctor, hey, how much should I take? What dose should I be taking? Is it the low dose or is it the regular dose? How often should I be taking it? And for what length of time? Sometimes, you know, it might not be, it might be after surgery where you're at a risk for a blood clot and they, they only want you to take it for a certain amount of time. So make sure you clear that up with your physician because it's not on the labels. The, the cardiac prevention dose is not on the labels that you're buying over the counter. So make sure that you're clear with your healthcare provider about what you're supposed to be actually taking. Go ahead. And then knowing the signs of the heart attack. So that video was awesome, right? Like it was funny, but it actually was really um, realistic. So you notice in the beginning, her, her jaw, she was kind of moving her jaw around. Um, and she was grabbing her shoulder and like her, shaking her arm out. So symptoms of a heart attack in women prevent, present much differently in men a lot of times. And a lot of times women just think that they have heartburn, um, and they feel this like pressure and burning in their chest and they, they mistake it for heartburn. So you saw her in that video, she reached for antacids. So that's another symptom. It could it could come across as like a really bad heartburn um, or a jaw pain or arm pain. Um, women more often get that jaw pain um, and shortness of breath than men do. Um, but also you can break out in a cold sweat. We watched her. She was sweating. Um, she was lightheaded and dizzy. She kind of like banged into the um, refrigerator there. So they're all very common signs of a heart attack. And the difference between, I think, um, heartburn or, you know, an arm pain is that it kind of comes on suddenly and it doesn't really go away. It's pretty severe. It's not something that antacids are taking away or anything. If you experience any combination of those things, the arm pain with the, you know, with the chest pain or sweating or all of a sudden feeling dizzy or tired, they're really good indicators that there may be something going on. And I would call 911 in that case. And then you can go to the next slide. Um, and as always, I always end my sections with if you ever have any questions, <clears throat> excuse me, about your medications or about your cardiac risk or anything at all re related to your healthcare, make friends with your pharmacist. We are there for you. We love talking to you. Our giant pharmacists are amazing. If you're lucky enough to be in a store that has a pharmacy, go make friends with them. Go say hi. You don't have to get your prescriptions from us. Um, just, you know, we're an accessible healthcare professional and we always love to answer your questions. Yes, that was great, Dana. Good information, especially with the, the symptoms for women because they're, they're different than men. They can be. So it's good to be aware of the things that we might need to be looking out for. Um, let's see what we've got in the chat. So. This is great information. Yes, yes I, I agree. It's definitely information that we all need to know. Um, sounds like the rules for baby aspirin have been updated. I think that is the case, right? Yeah. Yep. They're being a little more um, selective with who they 
and when I say they, I mean, in general, the medical world, um, who they recommend aspirin for, it's actually really, they found that it's really only beneficial to prevent secondary cardiac events. So if you've already had a stroke or a heart attack or some kind of cardiac event, um, it's more helpful to prevent your secondary, like a second one, than it is to prevent a primary um, event. Good to know. Good to know. Um, so let me see. I take all my heart medication in the AM. Is that right? So that's going to be something you know that's specific to you um, and what your doctor prescribes. Um, I don't know if you have anything to add to that, Dana. Yeah, I would say, I mean, heart medicine is a pretty broad term. So that can be a blood pressure medicine. It can be an antiarrhythmic. It can be even a cholesterol medicine. It can be considered a heart medication. It really depends on what it is. And it depends on um, when your doctor directed you to take it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, let's see. Are you familiar with heart murmurs? Um, may, are you asking me in, in general? Yeah, okay. yeah. So, so, okay. so heart murmurs are typically just um, like a, a little irregular heartbeat. It's not always uh, anything that's alarming. It's something that it's usually your doctor would watch if it's a true murmur. It's just um, something with the valves and the way that it, it plays into the heartbeat. It's something that they'll usually watch. Um, I, th I think that answers that question. Yeah, yeah, I think. <laughs> Um, so someone noted when adding an over-the-counter check with pharmacy to be sure it plays nice with prescriptions. And that is definitely true. Absolutely. Always. Cause over the, you know, especially supplements, not all supplements are benign. Um, anything, you know, that you're putting in your body can come with a side effect or an interaction. So definitely make sure, especially if you're on cardiac medications yeah. or blood thinners, um, especially double check with your physician or your pharmacist to make sure that yes, it plays nice with your prescribed medications. Yeah. Then that, you know, same for food, you know, especially with the heart medications, grapefruit um, or different things like that. Um, so knowing, you know, what medication you're on specifically and what interactions that medication may have. So, you know, it's definitely if you're at the doctor, you want to ask your doctor, ask your doctor, but you can always ask a pharmacist, you can always ask a dietitian, and we'll be happy to get the information for you because we want our medications to work. That's why we're taking them. So we don't want anything um, interfering with that. So, okay, I'm going to check and see if there's any other, any other last minute questions or thoughts. Someone said that would be probably me too busy to realize I was having a heart attack. Well, we're going to, we're going to work on that. Let's uh, <laughs> take some time for ourselves, slow down. I know that everything feels like it has to be like right now, but really just kind of giving yourself some more time. That's what I've been working on um, personally. And it, it feels nice. Mm -hmm. I'm not perfect at it, but I try um, okay, well, if, of course, thank you. Thank you to Dana. And I'm so glad that y'all joined us tonight. I will definitely be sending out our slides. And um, so you'll be looking, be looking for an email uh, from me and I will share those. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Y'all have a great rest of your evening. Bye, guys.